Welcome everyone to Already Cancelled. I am Peter and I'm joined as always by Tara and this is going to be our ranking, our top 10 episodes of the classic original version of the Twilight Zone. We did this at the end of season 1 after we reviewed all the episodes so we're doing it here again at the end of season 2. And we had 29 episodes to pick from to do a top 10 and at the end we'll also do our worst 3. So that's what's coming up. Uh, obviously, we'll back back to a regular review next week. We'll start season three off, so that'll be exciting. Are you excited about season three, Tara? Is that a thing you're excited? Oh yeah, for? hell yeah! Oh okay, that was way more enthusiasm than I was expecting. <laughs> uh, so no, we've um, had like a couple weeks off of, of reviewing them too. I miss them. That's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because we we sort of got ahead in recording, and it's been a little while since we did the last one now. So yeah, so yeah, we'll be back to reviewing Twilight Zone next week. But uh, we are going to dive into. So top 10. So we sat down before this and we we debated with each other mm-hmm. as to what our official co-joined... Some, name, some names were called. Some blood was drawn. Yes. Yes. Lots, lots of nasty words were said to but each we other. But we have a cumulative list. It's a hard word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a nasty pronunciation of the word. It wasn't a nasty word in and of itself. Uh, <laughs> That's what I meant by some some words being thrown at each other so some, yes. some bad words and that they're just bad english <laughs> <laughs> uh, i will not stand for your diction uh, <laughs> may have been uttered at some point but we're gonna get into it so we're gonna start obviously with our top 10 episodes of season two of the original twilight zone series uh, this of course had 29 episodes a little bit down from episode, season one's 36 uh, it's back to 36 for season three so uh we'll, we'll Actually, when we get to season four, I never, I've not thought about this before, but we should, we'll have to be like a top five in season four because they half the episode count. They're all twice as right. long, but it's half the number of episodes. So the, the top list will also be half. It'll probably still be a bottom three, though, because you can't do half of three. <laughs> That's right. So, yes, without further ado, Tara, why don't you tell us what episodes or what number 10 is? Number 10 is one that I fought for. Yes. And it is Static, which was episode 20 of season two. It was indeed. Uh, the premise of this one was the sort of it's a bunch of old people. Uh, <laughs> it feels very blunt to say it that way, but a bunch of elderly people who are past their prime, who all live in a boarding house together, and the main gentleman finds an old wireless, you know, the old radio system, and he listens to some broadcasts, which actually are broadcasts from his youth, broadcasts that happened back in like, the nineteen thirties or whatever it was, uh, maybe twenties. And he really believes this, but no one else ever gets to hear them to the point where he thinks he's going kind of crazy. The whole thing kind of becomes a, a a metaphor for him going back to his past. It's all about regret and the fact that he never did what, with his life what he thought he should or could do. And he's lost the fire and the passion that he had. Yeah, I mean, this is not like a new concept in Twilight Zone, like a man nostalgic for the past. But this one really ends in tragedy. I think it's it's not about people who made poor decisions or something big that happened in their life it's just about an elderly man looking back in the past and wondering where things went wrong but there wasn't like a specific event it was just he just kind of lived his life and never did anything eventful or daring and he is lost at the end at the end he's just lost in his in his fantasy and like there's a woman also living in the house who he was supposed to marry And like when he's reliving this, she doesn't even like link it to like the romance. Like you're not still in love with me because the old you was in love with me and we were going to get married. It's just, you're just in love with the feeling you had at that time. You know, it's, it's a different kind of loss. And I, I, it stuck with me after we watched, I liked it. I I sort of liked it when we watched the episode. I liked it a lot after we talked about it and it's still one I think about. Yeah. It's a more, I guess depressingly realistic episode because it's more about just like normal regret than it is anything else. I mean, obviously the idea of this radio station playing these old things, which you could argue is just in his head, that it's not real anyway. Like it may mm-hmm. just be in his head. But other than that, there's nothing supernatural or science fiction going on. It's just purely the sadness of old age <laughs> and feeling yeah. like you've not lived the life you wanted. So it has a bit of a, a stark feeling to it because of that. Um, I didn't love it as much as you did, though. I, I don't know if this stuck with me as much, but you did fight for this. And I did. I was threatened heavily if this did not make it onto the list. <laughs> so that's why it's number 10. I've compromised enough for this list. Oh, my. As, as the people will find out. Oh, my. 
what you call compromise is such a simple, <laughs> stupid little thing. It's minuscule, the compromise hey, that you have made. this is all I have, okay? <laughs> you compromised. <laughs> I'll just I'll just take the 70 inch TV and not the 75. I've compromised. This hurts. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's number nine? <laughs> number nine is episode 24, The Rip Van Winkle Caper, which was like, a really fun one. Yeah, I feel like this one is one that we may get a little bit of. I mean, we may get, we may get some flack on static as well, admittedly, but at least, you know. I, I was only one foot in on that one. This one, I'm all on board for. And we may get some flack for this one because it's not necessarily a great, great episode, but it's a fun episode. I think the two actors in this yeah. uh, make it a blast to watch. It's about a group of thieves who rob all this gold from a train. And we were told in the comments, because we, we theorized in the review quite a bit about the value of gold. Apparently gold's more valuable now than it was in the 60s. Yeah, isn't that why like Ron Swanson has gold buried in his backyard? Because it always... It, that makes it, sense. It doesn't yeah. really go down in value. Do you know what that tells me? It tells me that I need to rewatch Parts and Recreation again because I forgot that. Uh, <laughs> but it's this group of thieves who steal gold from a train and they've got like a scientist with them as part of the squad who's got this ingenious plan to cryo sleep them all basically for a hundred years or give or take so that they'll wake up and you know all the heat will be gone. No one will be looking for them because it's been a hundred years. No one's going to remember about this train robbery then. And. Right. Of course, the, the boxes that they go to sleep in are just these glass boxes. They don't even look remotely like... I mean, mm-hmm. I get it. You've got a budget. I understand. But them waking uh, uh, up... They're basically glass coffins inside of a, a cave in California. Yeah. You know, a rock cave with earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> so they wake up and it becomes a sort of power play between the, le- the lead thief and the scientist as it becomes this kind of like... Uh, you know, there's this story of value and what you're willing to do to preserve your value and kind of a sort of ironic twist, which we kind of saw coming, uh, even though we were wrong about certain things in the real world. <laughs> yeah. I think this one was written by Rod Serling, and you could tell it's a very, like, classic Twilight Zone, you know, come up, come up in episode. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's, a fun, it's a fun premise. Like I say, I, I think the, the back and forth and the, the lead thief kind of swindling the scientist uh mm-hmm. and put them to breaking point is, and we get uh, to see future people in a future car they do yeah uh so that is the rip van winkle caper i just think it's a good fun time more than anything what's number eight number eight is a penny for your thoughts which is episode 16 yes thank you there you go uh, i just remembered i was supposed to say that <laughs> <laughs> no this is uh, about uh, a banker who he tosses a coin at the start of his day and it lands edge up and for the rest of the day because of this <laughs> he can read people's thoughts and mm. he overhears both a, a woman who works in the bank who kind of has feelings for him but also he hears the thoughts of his boss who is giving him a hard time and more importantly perhaps an old man who works there who he thinks is going to rob the bank and it's kind of a story about how thoughts are private and having confidence in himself and mm-hmm. it's kind of one of the most well-rounded plots i think of this season of twilight zone and that it really fits everything into its 25 minute runtime in terms of setting up who he is what his arc has to be in terms of what he has to get over by the end you know there's, there's a girl to get there's a, a villain kind of to stop there's an antagonist yeah. you know everything but then by the end everything is neatly tied up in a boat everything's paid off so it's actually and really impressive to, and he gets to blackmail his boss he does, yes. <laughs> so it's a, it's a very impressive bow that's in a knot, you know, at the end of the episode, which I think is something that even some of the best episodes, uh, you know, they, they play with ambiguity and things like that, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but yeah. this is impressive because it is such a neatly concluded story that's that's over. Um, But, no, it's a solid one. Uh, yeah, good, I good, agree. Good it, it's definitely one that I remember from watching, you know, in previous years, of watching Twilight Zone on television. Just one that sticks with you. Yeah, it's it's one that gets just kind of all the elements right. There's nothing that's lacking in it. Uh, so that is uh, a penny for your thoughts. What's number seven? Number seven, no, episode twenty six, Shadow Play. Yeah, this is an interesting one. This is the uh, mm-hmm. this is the the man who is sentenced to death, but he believes that he's actually just having this dream every night Mm -hmm. and he has to convince the other characters in the dream that they are just fictional versions of people he knows and that they are not real and 
I think there is plot holes in this one, or not maybe it's necessarily plot holes, but there's holes in the the thinking of this episode because there's definitely a lot of questions we had that we could we could poke at. But what it does have is great ideas, and some of the ideas about the characters trying to like sort of almost find the flaws in the world mm-hmm. to prove that they're not in a real world is a lot of fun. And even though you you believe a young Dennis Weaver, which is great to see also. Even though you believe him and that it, the world is a dream, like the tension of all the characters like not coming back at the end, there is a ticking, ticking time bomb here or ticking time clock, and the I think the I think it's really good tension. It's it's really good, and yeah, there are some you know nitpicks about the plot, and like we do we don't really follow the the guy who's dreaming. We follow the characters in his dream. Yeah. So why would he dream about people if he's not in the scene also? Which is why we, most... we didn't really fault uh, we didn't really fault um, Arnold Schwarzenegger for that in Total Recall, so we can't fault Dennis Weaver <laughs> in Twilight Zone. <laughs> well, uh, that's what makes the episode interesting, though, is that choice to follow the other characters. I, to, to honestly, if we, if we didn't do that in that episode, the episode may have fell flat for me. It was them yeah. debating like, are we in a real world? That was that made the whole thing interesting. Honestly, yeah, well, very unique com- concept all, that way. There's a lot of things in the episode to iron out. Which is why I actually do think that, you know, if there's anything that I'd say, hey, this could use, like, a, a remake that's maybe twice as long, or even a movie. Like, I, I could see mm-hmm. a movie of this, like, working uh, with a bit more, you know, the, really, you know, playing out the ideas and fleshing them out. It's called Total Recall. <laughs> it's not, that's not the same. <laughs> yeah. I, I get the comparison, but it's not the same thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, that's uh, <laughs> Shadow Play. What's number six? Uh, number six is episode 28 of season two, and that is, Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? Oh yeah, classic one, this one. Uh, this is your, essentially a murder mystery without a murder. It's an alien has crash landed, ran into a diner, and the police officers that arrive have to figure out which of the people in the diner is an alien. There was a bus that stopped here, that's the only people who have stopped, but there's one more person than there should be in the diner. Mm-hmm and they can't quite explain it. So it becomes this sort of game of questioning and who each is who and where did they come from and what, where are they going. Um, really fun element of deduction. It does maybe have like a, a fun yet kind of tacked on extra twist, which is kind of weird. But uh, the stuff <laughs> at the memorable. end is all... Yeah, it's memorable. Yeah, but I mean, the visuals of both parts of the twist at the end are really memorable. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the very classic Twilight Zone visuals. Yep. Uh, but twist everything... on, twist on, twist. is twist all the way down. Yeah, everything before that though was really funny to watch uh outside of maybe a bit of light dated sexism bizarrely uh which kind of caught us off guard yeah yeah <laughs> i mean she was dressed like uh i don't know like she was going to some expensive ball or something she was like literally in a gown on the bus with jewelry <laughs> well yeah but i mean there was the scene where the police officer and the bus driver both kind of like looked at her ass Checked at the same time and then yeah. nodded in like solidarity like oh there's a fine fine ass there isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah a little, a little odd yeah well, i'll just i'll call it out when i see it but it's a really funny episode though i, I love it the is... snowy setting you know it's, yeah, it's all you know, the snow down the bridge is out so they can't travel so they're stuck at the diner it's all the atmospheric things that i like in a little ball yeah, story the, and then you know who who do you trust who need not trust everybody's sort of making their case or telling their story it, I mean, it's a classic formula that works, you know. That's why it works in The Hateful Eight, it works in Clue, it works in this. <laughs> you worked The Hateful Eight into this top ten. Hey, I think it's... I, I brought it up in the review also when we talked about it. You did, but you you managed to bring it up again here. <laughs> I've, got a minute to t- I've got a minute to talk about this episode again. I'm going to somehow <laughs> squeeze it in. No. Um... <laughs> I, 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 do you know what? This is one that I know has a remake episode, either in the Ease of the 2000s version. So when we do eventually get to that, I'll be really fascinated to see how the remake episodes hold up. Yeah, people seem to love the 80s remake because I think they're uh, from some of the comments I've seen, people are really excited for us to get to that eventually. I don't hmm. think that I, I don't think that I know those episodes. So no, I mean, no. that'd be interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to the 80s version a lot more than I am the 2000s version. <laughs> Season three, baby. Because the two thousand ones, <laughs> I've heard nothing. No, no, I don't mean the new one. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> there was a, there was a version in the two thousands. Uh, I think Forrest yeah, Whitaker. Yeah, actually, I do think I remember that. Yeah, 
I don't know if I watched it, but I definitely remember the advertising for it. Like Twilight Zone's coming back for the new millennium. Yes. So I'm not really looking forward to that one because I've heard nothing but bad things really on that one. So mm -hmm. not looking forward to that. I'm not really looking forward to season three, the new one either, admittedly. Here's but. here's the thing though. Do we watch Night Gallery before we watch the eighties Twilight Zone or do we just jump straight to the Twilight Zone? That's a good question. Maybe that's something that for the, the commenters to tell us, like, would you rather we do other anthology shows in between? Ooh, maybe we could do a patron vote. Because I think Night Gallery, I think Outer Limits is another viable thing for us to do. I think Outer Limits is a whole different series. I mean, technically Night Gallery is too, but it's still Rod Serling doing the same type of storytelling. So you don't want to even discuss Outer Limits until we've done all the Twilight Zones. Then maybe Correct. then it can take the slot. Okay. Correct. And then there's other ones as well whose names I can't remember, but uh, Hitchcock presents or something. I don't know. All right. Anyway, we're talking about really real Marshall Steel. Please, uh, please stand up. Uh, which is very. Good. In fact, very someone good there was a commenter on Patreon just the other day who explained where the the, the phrase came from. Uh, well, the real so and so. Please stand up. It was from an old game show where three people pretended to be like the same person, and only one of them was the real person. Oh, and, uh, so that is it, familiar. Yeah, and it always ended with them saying, "Well, the real." so and so please stand up that's where it came I from i see i see because so, i was questioning that in the episode because i didn't know so yeah I don't know either. our patrons are very useful people sometimes and we love them they're all right <laughs> what's number five i love them <laughs> I number, do too. <laughs> number five is episode 15 the invaders yes I, I yeah this is this is like one of the most memorable episodes of the show because i had seen season yeah. one and two like, I don't know, eight years ago, something like that, a long time ago. And I'd forgotten so many of the episodes, but this was one, you know, aside from the really famous episodes that I remembered very vividly. Yeah. Because I was waiting to get to it. I knew what the ending this, was. This is the uh, the WALL-E version of <laughs> <laughs> Twilight Zone, where it's, it's just a visual storytelling. Yeah, it's basically a silent film for the most part. It's, it's a woman who's alone in her kind of farmhouse, and she starts hearing noises, and we get essentially many aliens in little astronaut suits have arrived. She gets invaded by toys. <laughs> yes, they are toys. Like the, the the physical effect is that they look like toys. And yes, the physical practical effects of this episode do not hold, hold up. up. In fact, I would hasten to guess that they never really were that good. Even in the sixties, I don't imagine like watching this and going, "Ah, oh, these look all right." Uh, if you, if you happen to be that old and you were around for the original airing, please do tell us. In a black and white CRT TV in the 1960s, did this not look stupid? <laughs> but I, it is so endearing to watch still. Oh yeah. Like, no, this woman's acting her ass off because it's a silent story of her trying to like run and hide and attack and fight back against these two little uh, toy robots. That's what they look like anyway. Uh, they're yeah. actually aliens, you know, inside body suits, technically, but they look like toys. <laughs> they look like toy right, robots. Right. And with laser guns that give her acne. Yes, yes. Uh, but there's a lot of fun stuff. And then the, the twist. And we're, we're not revealing the twist in this top ten. I don't know. I'm keeping this at least spoiler late. No, we're not. At the very least. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a sort of twist the show's kind of done before. And it'll probably do again. But it is a fun one. And uh, it's, it's a fun little experience of a 25-minute episode, which has very little dialogue. The, the two alien robots do kind of say stuff to each other once or twice. But that's pretty much it. We never hear anything from her. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, uh, that's good that's very atmospheric uh, this is one of these ones where kind of like the uh, mannequin one from last season I thought right. the atmosphere was really well done and this one is just all atmosphere because that's all it is it's just all action so very good yep very good very fun what's number four number four is episode 25 the silence yeah this is the, this is actually a really unique episode in that there's no science fiction element there's no supernatural element there is nothing but human conflict and a... And human deception. Yes, a wager, if you will, where someone who's a bit of a chatty Cathy, he never shuts up, and this old guy at this uh, gentleman's club, or whatever this is, one of these lodge places, basically <laughs> makes a like wager... country club, yeah. Yeah, makes a wager with him that he can't keep quiet for a year, and to ensure that he does so, and they can monitor it, he lives in a glass cell, essentially, in the basement of this, this uh, country club, uh, with a little private toilet area, but he's basically in a glass cell. And if he can make it the whole year without saying a single word, he will pay him... I can't remember what the amount was. It was like maybe half a million or something like that. Um, 
but the character is desperate for money because his wife keeps spending money which i made fun of when we watched it this is the one <laughs> detail that's kind of goofy to me is like well your wife doesn't know what your income is she just spends willy-nilly and you have to try and keep up with the debt it's such yeah. an old tv trope he talks about it like she goes to the she goes to tiffany's like she like anyone else would go to the grocery store <laughs> I'll have can't that. you just have I'll a conversation have with her? <laughs> yeah, can't you tell that if she doesn't stop getting stuff from Tiffany's, or at least oh, slows that's right. down? She'll, she'll leave him. Yes. She's a gold digger. Yes. Which maybe begs the question, find a better wife. Just <laughs> at that point. Um, but, no, I mean, it's just a purely psychological thing, because it's all about the, the guy who's made the bet getting worried as time goes on, as we cut through the year, where he starts to try He's and talk him out of it. pony up. <laughs> yeah, he tries to talk him out of like, hey, you know what, this has went far enough. I'll give you a few thousand if you just end this now. This is enough. Yeah. And the guy's determined. And again, there's a bit of a twist and a bit of a reveal. But it's all about the... Basically, the egos of these two men and what mm-hmm. their, the appearance they want to keep in front of everyone else and what they're willing to do. And what they're to willing do. to do to yeah. win. So, uh, and as that, it's a really strong episode. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Definitely. Just pure, just pure writing and performing. So... And we uh, had some disagreement on who actually was the worst. <laughs> of the two, yeah. Yes. Uh, neither one comes out squeaky clean. I think mm-hmm. that's fair. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, we can't, I can't say what the actual debate was because I'd get to the spoiler, but yes, there was a, a debate as if everything was on the up and up. All right. Uh, <laughs> Tara, what is number three? Yes, yeah, speaking of de- debate <laughs> deservedly, the two of us. Deservedly at number three, might I add. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's the nick of time. <laughs> Can you believe Tara is basically being a diva? Let's be honest what this is. She has been a diva and threatened to walk off the show because I just say I said that I'd rather have this at number three than number two. That's what she's upset about. Can we just can we just get that out in the open? Yes. That, that I and argued. I was the one that had to compromise. I had to put William Shatner in number three. <laughs> I gave you static on the list. <sighs> There were compromises on both parties. Thank you very much. Still not happy about it. <laughs> Nick of Time has some hack by the name of Billy Shatner. Uh, <laughs> you take that back. <laughs> How dare you, sir? I know you've seen all three seasons and the movies. <laughs> That is the big giant head you're talking about. <laughs> oh, I really need to rewatch Thunder Rock from the Sun. Um, but yes, uh, William Shatner's in this episode, and him and his new wife, uh, or wife to be, are they just married or are they just about to get married? I think they were just married. But I think they're, they're newlyweds, yeah. Yeah. They're traveling through the US, they're in Ohio, if I remember correctly, and they stop in a small town, they go to a diner, and there's a little one of these. And I love how Rod Serling introduced this when he was like, teasing it, as if we were all used to these things existing. I'm like, this is a time thing, because I've never seen one of these things in my life. Yeah, the but, little paper fortune tellers. Yeah, the little fortune teller. It's like a napkin holder, but it's got a little gimmick in it to steal your change. And basically, it's an episode where it predicts the future, but you can only ask it yes or no stale questions. And it only gives you vague responses. So yeah. you, depending on your state of mind, you can interpret them um, to be like, uh, like an like a bad omen or good fortune. Yeah. So it's all about whether or not there's any truth to what it's predicting, or it's just the person letting it get into their mind and becoming obsessed with the the possible right. answers. But I mean, they're vague enough, with just a hint of detail, to where things start happening. And it, it seems very much like it is predicting the future for this couple to the point where they are afraid to leave because something bad may happen to them. Yeah. Um, so, no, it's just a, it's a solid episode that, again, makes great use of just essentially one set and one street and just mm-hmm. does everything with, with that. And, you know, it's just got an ending that kind of makes it feel like a bigger story. And, you know, and yes, William Shatner getting paranoid is kind of the, the role that he was born to, to play. <laughs> yeah, that because and it, being a leader, of course. That being a leader and holding a giant cock made a rock. Yes, these are the, the things that he is... I love that picture. <laughs> best known for. <laughs> I just... I, so, so, you know, legend says that if you look really closely in the corner, you can see a reflection of the guy who built that prop just going... <laughs> <laughs> I kid, of course. Uh, now, that could tell you is good, um, even though Tara rates it a bit 
higher than perhaps most human beings would. I don't think that's true. I think it's <laughs> deservedly great. <laughs> uh, the sad part is, is we get to the next Shatner episode. I, I know I can't argue that it's not that great because it's like one of the most famous episodes of the entire... <laughs> arguably the most famous episode of the entire show. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, is, that, that, is that season that three? next season. Yeah, that may be a season three episode. I'm not sure, but maybe. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay, what's number two? Number two is episode 17, despite my best efforts, <laughs> is 22. Yes. Uh, is that number two, meaning that it is definitively better than Nick of Time, as we've clearly established with a simple one through ten system that we've devised. I don't devised. know why I do this. Why do I do this show? <laughs> no, I, I think 22 is a really good episode. And it's not a perfect episode. There's definitely a couple of scenes in the middle that feel oddly... like when, when you Because I think in the review, we looked back at a couple of scenes and went, yeah, why were these scenes like even here? What, what was the point of this little <laughs> diversion? But it's got a really good sort of build of dread and the, the way the character is like worried about these dreams she's having in the hospital she keeps having this this nightmare yes i just remembered the nurse that was like suddenly revealed yes yes <laughs> yeah, it's got, it was it, so funny there's nothing that, like that in the nick of time oh no no there, it's got that really goofy weird thing in the middle which made us laugh and we we i mean we talked about that for a good like five minutes <laughs> i think in the review it was it was it was good stuff but it's got yeah. a really good ending it's like the ending is yeah the ending makes the whole thing really i mean the tension's good the build-up's good and there is a, a fantastic payoff to it uh they're just a, a couple of goofy things like the nurse that was revealed behind the curtain number one and and the doctor who was just so sinister and evil sounding that's time. right that's right yeah, yeah, yeah i did yeah so there's some really like fun goofy elements in the middle to like sort of get through was it, wasn't it the doctor also just commenting on her body the whole time or was that a different character it was Somebody him. was just talking about her body. Yeah, it was either him or her, age, or her agent that was constantly saying yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, you're right. Um, no, the ending, I think what I like about the ending, though, it's not just that it's like a twisty, reveal ending, it's that you kind of like start putting all the pieces together in your head as it's happening mm -hmm. and you realize what's about. And I think the fact that you get it before it happens is what makes it feel so good. Right. You think you think it's going one way, like, okay, the number 22, she keeps dreaming about the morgue and it's in room 22. And I don't know. You think you can predict what's going to happen. And then like the episode goes to a place where you're like, oh, I guess that's not what it's about. And then as the character is starting to figure things out, you become like one step ahead of her and yeah. it, it becomes fun again. Yeah, it becomes it's like, fun. Like, oh, this is really good. Like, this is really well played out. And the ending's a pretty, you know, big deal. I really like the uh, the final moment. It's, it's impressive for a show of its time period with its budget. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it didn't... And it's one of the videotape episodes which you despise. Yeah, I, I hate I hate that one of the, my favorite episodes of the season is one of the videotape episodes. Uh, but, hey, you got static on here, so two of the videotape episodes are on here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there are a couple other ones that we considered. At least one more, yeah. Yeah, one more that we considered. Um, definitely didn't, did, did not consider that uh, long distance call episode, which I know people uh, do like more than I do, apparently. But... Maybe it's on our worst list. We Maybe still have we'll, that to go through. We'll get to the worst three in a minute. Uh, but 22 is number number two of the season for us. And we didn't have to really debate what number one was. I said, Tara, what do you think number one should be? You said the, the name, and I said, yep, that's exactly what I was thinking. There was, there was no... <laughs> F sand or butts. Uh, Tara, what is number one? Number one is episode six, Eye of the Beholder. Which is notable because I think the start of the season was kind of rough. The first five episodes, they're not all bad, but and as we'll get to in our, our worst list in a second. I mean, half of our list is in the 20s. Yeah, yeah. And like three of them are right next to, or like back to back. So like see, you're right. Like the last half of the ep or not even the last half of the season, like the last third of the season was clearly better than the first two. Yeah, there's some stuff some for the middle as well. You you got uh fifteen, seventeen, sixteen all in there. In fact, they're all back to back as well. Jeez, we, there's like little pockets in the yeah, season of true. really good episodes. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> but the first like five, aside from like one sort of fun episode, I mostly did not like that much. In fact, mm -hmm. I really didn't like a couple of them. And then you get to the episode six, you get to Eye of the Beholder, which is one of the famous episodes of the show. And sure. it's stylistically the one that stands out the most of the whole show. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned that because the Invaders is a very stylistic episode as well. Very tension filled. 
I the beholds are on another level. It's this like no, we have like yeah. A, I mean, it's, it feels nasty to call it a gimmick because that's not really what I, I don't mean to say that in a negative way, but it has this, we're going to have this this style, we've got this concept where we're going to shoot, shoot everything mm-hmm. from the neck down and we're going to have this big reveal that, that hinges on the idea of what we're not seeing the entire time. And the way it tells its story, the way it builds up its ideas, the way, it even does world building in a way that most episodes of Twilight Zone won't do. Where you get yeah, a sense that's not of the, really the something that you may remember from the episode. Even if you remember Eye of the Beholder, okay, I, I, I remember the faces and all that. You may not remember the world that they live in and mm-hmm. like the, the, the fascist, like Nazi adjacent regime that is going on. You're like, oh, this actually connects to a much bigger thing than I remember. Yeah. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of, you know, talking points. It raises a lot of interesting... Uh, d- I wouldn't necessarily say the base, but certainly ideas. Certainly things to mull over and sort of theorize about what it means and the, 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 the satire or the commentary that it's having. Because there is definitely mm-hmm. commentary in there about about beauty, about uh, even s- stuff like... Status uh, quo status quo even racism you know, mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of stuff in there uh, that you know it feels it, it's a really a step above and you know i think obviously when we get to the very end of the twilight zone and we look back and say okay let's do a top 10 of the whole show and we look at Ooh, all of our are we gonna do that oh yeah <laughs> well i mean we'll have all of these top 10s to look at so we can just look at our top 10s and say okay what which That's 10 true. of the top 10s uh i'll just i'll just rewatch our our episodes <laughs> Unless, unless in theory, one season has such a good season, the episode, like, the, the 13th best episode of season three is better than anything from season one or two. <laughs> That's possible, I suppose, but very unlikely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very unlikely. So, no, I Beholder is number one, and it wasn't even a question. Like, there was no doubt in either of our minds that this was number one. Yep. It feels special. Within the first couple of seconds, because of the way it's shot, it feels special. It feels like it's doing something really fascinating and it never lets that go and it holds up to the end. And Yeah. Yep. Wonderful. Pretty perfect episode. Yep. Which well, takes us to the bottom three of the of the season. And I know that, you know, some of our picks have been controversial in the season one list. They're both on the best and worst of. People are shocked that we put one in that one or the other. Yeah. So, you know, and maybe there's been a couple of hot takes in that that top 10. Maybe some people are going, what, 22 is too high or or something. Rip Van Winkle capers there and so, such and such is not. Well, we'll see how people feel about these bottom three. <laughs> we'll see if these are, these are controversial picks. Tara, what was our third worst episode? That would be season one, or season one, episode season one, one of <laughs> season two. <laughs> it would be the fever. I'm just kidding. <laughs> The fever was so bad that it made it onto. <laughs> no, it would. It's uh, episode one of season two, and that is King Nine will not return. I'm going to say something bold here, actually, just to really set up this. I think all three of these are worse than the fever. <gasps> I don't know. The fever is really bad. <laughs> I I think the fever was a bad episode. I think all three of these are, especially one in three. I think are more boring to watch than the fever because my problem. Yeah. With, with number three and then we'll get to number one later but King Name Will Not Return is a bad remake of the first episode of season one definitely where it's, you yeah. know because remember where is everybody it's the guy on his own he's in the universal back lot he's like ah where is everybody like that, that's the episode right he's on his own this is that but it's a plane in the desert that's been shot down during World War 2 and yeah and even though the episodes are only like 24 minutes <laughs> it feels really long like there's so much padding with him just kind of Talking killing to yeah he's talking to himself he's killing time Every, if you go back to where is everybody like he's got so many different like you know places to look into and he's you know mm-hmm. he's different clues different things that add to the thought process and make us go oh what about this and then once you know what the twist is in that episode you look back at some of those moments and go oh that meant that and that meant that right this right. episode uh, it just like they try to he's get in the desert with the plane he's by himself i think there's a newspaper that he has at one point yeah. they basically they have a twist at the end which is a lot like the twist from that episode as well except they tack on this extra little bit at the end to actually make you go ooh you know in theory of course <laughs> I just went nah whatever <laughs> you've lost me at this point I don't care <laughs> yeah season 2 was not off to a good start it was not uh, so kind of will not return was a slog um, mm-hmm. to start off the season luckily there was much better to come as seen in our top 10 uh, what was number 2 of our worst episodes number 2 was episode 8 
the lateness of the hour. This one did have... Because we were very negative in our review for this, and there was a little bit of controversy in one or two of the comments. Yeah, I didn't hate the episode when I watched it, but when, once we started talking about it, I my it, it went down in my yeah. rankings. And I wasn't really as passionate about my dislike of it as you were, but I, I, I'm not going to disagree that it doesn't deserve to be on the list. It's, it's a really frustrating episode because I don't necessarily hate the IDs in it. And it's funny because, you know, we complained, this was cause this was the first videotape episode, so there was maybe a lot of that mm-hmm. hatred going on in there as well, but... Hey, a videotape episode made our number two. It did, uh, yeah. On both lists. I think in terms of, like, video <laughs> audio quality, this one's the worst, and just on a technical level as well, though. There's something really echoey about all the dialogue, there's something... Yeah, the mother moaning all the time. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I remember complaining. I was like, "Oh, it felt like a soap with just a couple of shots and all this." And I, one of the comments, uh, not to call someone out, but there was a comment. It was like, "Oh, you young people, you like, have to ask me all these quick cuts." The young generation. And I'm like, "I love a wonder." My favorite thing in filmmaking is when a director says, "No, we're going to do this whole thing in one take." I love yes. when things do that. I Thank will. Thank you, re- Ryan Coogler. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will like. <laughs> There's, there's probably a lot of really nasty ways to describe just how much I will fawn over a director when they do a one right? I mm-hmm. love it. It's nerd, like, Valhalla for me. So sure. 1917 was probably my favorite movie of last year. Oh my god, yeah, that was a stylistic <laughs> jerk-off the entire time, and I loved it. It's glorious. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I love when things do that, but there's a difference between doing an interesting one or where the camera's a part of the, the, the dance of the actors and the choreography, uh, or even like a good one where it's just static to, oh, this is shot like a, a TV soap where you've just got a simple shot and then a couple of things. And, you know, the editing was really poor, I thought. I thought there was a lot of weird pauses after lines that didn't feel like they were intended. It felt like the editing was just sloppy. Uh, and then the, you know, the whole twist was kind of just... I, I love stories about you know, this subject matter, which I, I guess, minor spoiler, there's androids involved. Mm-hmm. But I, I just ultimately felt like it didn't do I mean, all that. It's not really a spoiler. They they bring it up in the beginning. They have android assistants. That's true, yeah. It's relatively early on, yeah. Uh, so. It's just, it is very predictable where it's going. And, uh, you know, I understand the point of it isn't the twist. It's more of, like, the monotony of people's lives. Um, but it's still not... <laughs> it's just not very exciting it's not very interesting like it doesn't really i think it does rely mostly on the twist for it to be like a good episode and Mm. you just sort of see it coming right from the start yeah to compare to 22 where i talk about how you get it a little bit before it happens and you and you you feel really happy with yourself you feel like you're engaged because you're putting the pieces together Mm -hmm. like the characters and it climaxes just as you've had the thought yourself so it all all crescendos with you and it feels great and this is the opposite of that where within a minute you're like well this is what this is where this is going Mm -hmm. and it kind of feels like it's trying to just draw out until it gets there and i don't really feel like i don't know watching the the moaning was just too much (laughs) watching the maid make the mother essentially have an orgasm in the middle of the room before dinner was kind of weird uh (laughs) oh that's the spot oh celia yes that's the spot yes i don't know if it was celia i can't remember the name she kind of made me blush. <laughs> <laughs> I I almost felt the husband should have been like, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, so that's number two. Uh, so Tara, what was our least favorite episode or worst episode of season two? I would say least favorite, not worst. But our least favorite episode was episode three, Nervous Man in a $4 Room boring <laughs> oh this was so boring that's uh, just like king name will not return because I, I i love when they can pull off like a like a one person show when it's just you know invaders is one person essentially running around a, a yeah. house or whereas everybody's one person running around like a, a little town i love when they can pull this off but this is the opposite end of the spectrum where it's one person in a room that's no bigger than like, what like 10 foot by 10 and yeah. it's just like him looking at himself in the reflection is you know, i mean there is another person like someone else comes to talk to him himself the plot don't get me wrong there is other characters at one point but i mean i barely even remember what the plot was it was i don't so, really remember he was, he was hiding because he'd killed a man i think 
It, it, yeah. Yeah. Or he was. Or he was. He was hiding because he was wanted, and he was going to be asked to kill a man to like, get him out of something. Or like, it, like that's. I mean, the fact that I can't remember what the, what the plot was about probably yeah, tells you everything. I think that's right. He's definitely a criminal that's hiding in a yeah a, in a motel or something. Let's see. Jackie Rhodes must face both his past and his conscious while waiting for the next assignment. Yeah, and he's just it's just a man talking to his reflection. Yeah, basically. What well, after you have one character who comes to to offer him the job for Lear, which if I remember correctly is that he has to kill someone and he's nervous about it. Uh and then yeah, he's talking to his reflection, he's sweating a lot. He's It is it's just two people the whole episode. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Which can be good. Right. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's, so, I mean, that no. statement I don't think is an indictment of it. The, the problem is that the story is not engaging, and it feels like it's just it feels like it's going through the motions of like Twilight Zone esque tricks to try and make it feel like there's stuff happening, but nothing ever really feels like it is. Yeah, just just all right, just just all right. It's not all right. Not, it's bad. I mean, it's not. Yeah, I won't turn it off if it's on TV. <laughs> but... But I, I didn't really enjoy it. No. It's like a... So my least favorite of season two. We ner- both had the same least favorite. It's Nervous Man, a four out of ten is what it is. Oh. See what I did there? <laughs> cool. So you didn't say this was the worst. What do you think is the worst then? If you if you think this is this isn't the, the worst. I just didn't want to say the worst. Okay, all right. Try to be, you know, more positive. It's just my least favorite. Oh. But they're oh. all my favorite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there you go. That's our that's our worst episode of the season. <laughs> Which I'm not I'm yep. not phrasing it like that to to piss off Tara. I'm actually just that's how I phrase it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it is the best and worst list, right? Yeah. Our 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 picks. Yes. Our personal mild fuzz TV picks. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's a not top- a definitive list. So I'll I'll just recap the list here just quickly before we we let you know. Uh, where you check things out and whatnot. Uh, so the best t- 10 episodes of the season were as follows. Number 10 was Static. Number 9 was the Rip Van Winkle Caper. Number 8 was Penny for Your Thoughts. Number 7 was Shadow Play. Number 6 was The Real Martian, Please Stand Up. Number 5 was The Invaders. 4, The Silence. 3, Nick of Time. 2, 22. And 1, Eye of the Beholder. And then the worst list was number 3, King Name Will Not Return. Number 2, The Lateness of the Hour. And number one, Nervous Man, a four dollar room, all in the first well eight episodes, I suppose. <laughs> For reason the the latest one is the is the the cut off, mm-hmm. but two of them in the first uh, three episodes. So that that start of the season was a bit shaky. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. That is a uh, that is our top ten and worst three of season two. Which means that next time I apologize time... if your favorite episode wasn't on our list, but please let us know what your favorites were. <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comments. Comments are good that we missed. Yes, uh, feel free to critique ours and tell us we're crazy uh, mm-hmm. and all that, and that's fine. And yeah, so uh, also like, liking is super important on YouTube. Uh, it lets us know that you enjoy the content, it lets the YouTube algorithm know that we're worth recommending it to other people, uh, and is the easy and free way to show your support. You can also, of course, uh, support us financially. Where can you do that, Tara? I was about to just go into it. I was like, no, Tara says this part. On you go. Damn it. <laughs> Can't catch a break. <laughs> Yeah, if you enjoy the show and uh, you want to support the channel, please check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash TV. And if you donate as little as one dollar per month, you will get access to bonus episodes for other shows we do, including our science fiction movie review show, The Atomic Cinema Experiment. And uh, if you donate five dollars per month, you will get access to these Twilight Zone episodes one week early. Plus uh, other shows we do one week early, like Babylon 5. So please check it out. Thank you. There you go. So yeah, catch there us on go. Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again uh, for watching or listening. Join us next time for the beginning of season three. Let's hope it has a better start than season two did. But keep watching TV, guys, in the Twilight Zone. <laughs>